adding interest to arpeggios. Recently I've been more confident in the progressions I choose for my songs, but the guitar arrangements are still very uninspired. I am particularly bad at creating cool arpeggios or riffs that enhance a section of a song rather than just going along for the ride. An example of a band that has truly magical guitar lines are The Strokes, and I was hoping you could help me investigate their methods for creating really powerful accompaniments to the chords being strummed on the other guitar, two guitar setup. I will first share the reference material, time stamped for convenience, and then I will think out loud a bit so that you can see why I am experiencing this writer's block. Automatic stop, chorus, https colon slash slash u2 dot be slash 6 gwbxj chenchva question mark t equals 66. Bad decisions, breakdown https colon slash slash u2 dot be slash 5 free tnz dvpa question mark t equals 65. The end has no end, verse. HTTPS colon slash slash u2 dot be slash 8 skew x12 zo dash a question mark t equals 31 reptilia chorus HTTPS colon slash slash u2 dot be slash b8 dash txg8 krws question mark t equals 87 would you consider these riffs counter melodies to the vocal melody do you think the melodic skeleton is selected first and then filled in with various tones or are these simply arpeggios with non-chord tones added for interest Speaking of non-chord tones, passing tones and neighbor tones, are these always on the off beat? Most of these cases are played in eight notes, so what is considered the off beat anyway? Is syncopation and rhythmic independence importance to these riffs? The automatic stop rhythm is particularly elegant. Also, in the end has no end, the way the seventh note ascends to the eighth note in the series the first few times but then the eighth descends to the seventh note in the series is just pure magic. Is there a name for this effect? It gives the riff this sort of circular, infinite motion, and very good closure at its completion. Somehow there is a good amount of tension in these lines. Is that tension created by the riffs themselves and related to the relationship between the notes horizontally, dissonant intervals, or is that tension built into the chord progression already? Maybe I have poor instincts, but the arpeggio patterns I conjure up are super boring. Are there any composers who are particularly good at this who I could study? All I can think of is Bach's 15351535. Whenever I Google arpeggio patterns, the results are just piano warm up exercises. Please let me know if I am simply lacking imagination or if I am looking in the wrong spot or approaching this incorrectly. I feel as though I am quite scrambled for something that seems relatively mathematic, formulaic at the end of the day, and I could really use this tool to elevate my songs. Thank you as always. Chordal harmony may be something interesting to explore. I stumbled into it while studying Alan Holdworth, who uses chordal harmony to build arpeggios. I was always, and am still, fascinated by Holdsworth's note selections, arpeggios and scale runs. Use of the terms chordal and quintal arises from a contrast, compositional or perceptual, with traditional tertian harmonic constructions. It goes on to say, as you point out, Listeners familiar with music of the European common practice period perceive tonal music as that which uses major and minor chords and scales, wherein both the major third and minor third constitute the basic structural elements of the harmony. My understanding of the topic is far from perfect or advanced, but I base it on the simplest definition, the harmonic layering of fourths. So, say you're playing a C chord, a kind of standard four-quarters rock rhythm. Your instinct might be to stick to a 1 3 5 7 sort of pattern, maybe based in major, mixolydian, so the B7, or minor, so the B3 and B7, which would give you the predictable sound you mention. But instead, try an arpeggio of force. In terms of that basic C5 chord you're chucking away on, try playing this over it in eighth notes, Cf B flat E flat C, I hold the E flat for a dotted beat which I subtract from the fifth note, so 1 2 3 4 5, 1 2 3 4 5. Conversely, if you play that descending, you're stacking fifths, which gives you the quintal the good ol rule of nine, which can be interesting to explore as an academic exercise, but as it says in the Wikipedia article, quintal harmony the harmonic layering of fifths specifically is a lesser used term, and since the fifth is the inversion or complement of the fourth, it is usually considered indistinct from chordal harmony. In that arpeggio, which I play, string, fret, A, 3D, 3G, 3B, 4B, 1, note there is an F. Interestingly, fourths and sixths are very frequently referred to as avoid notes insofar as improvising and solos. I had one teacher that would actually make a face when I hit a fourth. I never bought that, in fact I very much like the sound of the fourth in my soloing, but I do understand that it is more difficult to use it in a sonically pleasing manner than the in chord tones. 
But IMHO, that's what makes it interesting. And you certainly don't see Holdsworth avoiding it in his improvisation. If you take it to the next level, you turn the above into a movable shape, which you can play repeatedly up the fretboard. Here's a variation that I sometimes use, which switches between stacking the fourths off of C and B flat string fret. A, 3D, 3D, 8D, 8G, 8G, 13, B, 13E, 13E, 18, B, 13. In notes. CF B flat, B flat E flat A flat, CF B flat, C. It starts on and resolves to the root C nicely, and definitely doesn't sound like your usual chord tone arpeggio. When I do that sort of thing at a jam with some speed, inevitably, one the players asks if I studied jazz or something. Hope that helps.